And we're live. Welcome to Don't Be Coy. I'm your host, Uncle Lou. And today I have the honor, pleasure, and the utmost appreciation to have with me today, Mr. Damar Kirksky. Damar, thanks for being on the show, sir. How are you doing this afternoon? Oh, man, I'm doing great, bro. Appreciate you having me on. Of course, man. Of course. How's your week been going? Oh, bro, this this has been a horrible week <laughs> for as work-wise and all type. I, I'm ready for a vacation. I got a vacation coming next Wednesday, and I'm ready for it. What made it so terrible? Bro, I've been getting up 4.30 since Sunday. Mm. I've been jumping on ship to ship, checking ships, talking to captains, crew members, chief officers. I'm tired of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense, man. Well, for the people at home, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, yes. Welcome, world, to Damon Kirksey Life. I am an anime dweeb. I am a sports lover. I'm a hardworking person, loving, caring, and just to try to enjoy this life that has been, been given to me. Yeah, man, that sounds great. That sounds great. I know uh, one of the things that like I really wanted to talk to you today about was um your experience in like the um the cooking world and the cooking in the food industry and things of that nature i think you have a a very interesting story when it comes down to that and wanted to see if you wanted to share that with the world today oh man there ain't no problem um you want me to start from the beginning or you just want to want to get to the meaty gritty man you can start from the beginning i think that's a great place all right so let's say High school, 10th grade year, I always, well, coming from, I'm going to start from here. Coming from a family where your mother have to work two jobs and trying to make it things work for you and your brothers and sister, you have to learn how to cook. Growing up, I thought cooking was the one of the most tedious things to do for people that's not yourself, but ended up working finding love for it. Luckily, Hasbro High, had a culinary arts program where I can get into it and see that I really want to be like, where do I want to do this for the rest of my life? In which I enjoyed it. High school made me love culinary for what it was because I experienced the different things, tried different foods, learned by different cultures, different jobs within the culinary world. And I was like, bro, this, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do until college came. <laughs> so college came, got a scholarship for a culinary arts program at Pearl River Community College, and the whole program itself was shut down. Oh, wow. No, Yeah, like, it's, it's crazy. Like, first year, freshman year, moved in dorm, and I get there trying to get my curriculum ready, and the counselor like, oh, sir, we just canceled that program but literally two weeks before you even became a student here and i was like wow y'all wasn't going to inform the students that got scholarships for this yeah what did they say about that huh what did they even say about that like uh sorry to cut you off but like that's an interesting point like what did they say like when you asked them like were y'all going to inform the students or did they ever even inform y'all Oh no, it wasn't. It no, no formal anything. It was just like, oh well, I'm sorry, type of situation. Where you here now, <laughs> so what you want to do? Mm. I know, and my scholarship was based on that. Like my whole co- college career, my career, my life started was based on me starting at Pearl River and elevating to, you know, maybe blue or one of the art schools in Atlanta or in Cali, anywhere that would accept me. But with that happening, it kind of derailed my whole cooking career, my whole chefing career, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So, like, what did you decide to do after that? Like, um, did you just choose a different major? Or, like, what made you decide to, like, um, not pursue, like, other schools and stuff? Well, first first off, it was money-wise, man, like, when I, like I said at the beginning, my mom's worked two jobs. She was a high school dropout. She didn't really didn't know too much about college itself. Mm. So I was on my own with, you have your whole life decision to make at this given moment in any time moment. Bro, I was 18. Mm-hmm. I, 
I couldn't even tell you what drawers I was wearing in that thing. <laughs> that's a long inside my life. So with that, I was I was just like, well, there's a business side of culinary as well. Let me try to get a business degree, you know, here at Pearl River. So I did that, but with me doing that, it never clicked in me that, yeah, you're doing this for a temporary thing, but you still have to get back into your culinary world. And I never got back into that until I moved back to Hattiesburg. Mm. Yeah, so moving back to Hattiesburg, I went to USM uh, trying to pursue, actually trying to pursue that business degree also at the at the Pearl River was a complete bust for me because you it, it's really I feel like a random I'm sorry. No man, you great. Keep going. But it, it really like I was in Pearl River as a freshman, I was like, there's nothing for me to do here. Really. There's no reason for me to be here. I can get this business degree back at home or I can go to USM to get this same type of degree and be done with it. Mm-hmm. Which that was a a horrible mistake in his own because me being away <laughs> was I could have focused on school more than being at home and dealing with friends and all the family issues I had to deal with at home. But fast forward into my life, I met a friend named Blair Bass. His wife is a chef. Amazing, 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 amazing people. They love me for who I am and they try to give me an opportunity to come to Memphis and work on a real shelf and try to job shadow and try to learn all the experience I can under them. They try to go a different route into becoming a chef, let up, just besides getting that certificate. Well, <laughs> doing that, I the whole situation with that chef where she wasn't completely full with what she wanted to be in her business as well. The business was failing when I got there. Mm. They didn't have no clients. The building that was in was like, was about to be taken away. No money was coming in. So I'm literally in Memphis again for something that was, I was supposed to be looking for for my life. And then I'm not being there. Mm. The, the crazy, the, the thing about life and God, if people out there, if you are a believer or not, he will show you things that's not meant for you. Like it through and through, through actions, through trial and tribulation, through anything, he would tell you, like, this is not what I want to happen for you. This is not going to happen for you that much, how much you try, which is not really a bad thing. There are things out there that's way much better for you than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that that's my whole culinary experience. And chefs are assholes. Any, all chefs are assholes. Let's get this clear. <laughs> Like, <laughs> if you don't have any name to you or establish you or any type of experience you're looking for, they it's hard to get somebody, you know, let them job shadow you. Mm-hmm. Job shadow them anyway because there is a competition out there. That's yeah. a huge competition out there in the food industry. And they don't have time for young guys to really come in and looking for in that type of position. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like that's a that's a very interesting thing like i like you said you had those kind of back-to-back moments of um when you were at pearl river and the program getting shut down and then also like fast forward maybe like two four years later you're in memphis and like you're supposed to be getting another opportunity and that ends up not being um what you uh thought it was going to be so like what did you do did you decide to hang up your your apron or your um your chef's hat and say i don't want to do this anymore what you decide to do next man well the the next thing the next thing after that was okay if this cooking thing is not going to work out for you what what's going to be the move like i i sat on that well actually me not being a chef kind of was a hard blow for me because like that was that was a dream that was my goal so yeah. after that, you like, well, my goal failed. That's not for me. What else out there for me? And which now, 
I, I've always been a tech guy. I love technology. I love the movement of technology, how fast it's rapidly growing, how you can continue to learn more and more and more about technology. And I was like, that now I'm looking for, I'm getting all my IT certification so I can be in that type of career field. In which I can take this, I feel like I can take this career and still go back to that culinary world instead of being an actual cook, it's just being the tech side of it and make things more easier for chefs or for restaurants or build more programs better for them so that things can operate in more of a fast and efficient pace. Yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. That makes a lot of sense actually to me. So like, you know, I think that that's a, a very interesting kind of pivot too though, you know what I'm saying? Like moving from like the chef industry or food industry in general to going into IT, like, what I guess you could say were well, the stepping stones for you there a little bit easier? Did you have like a mentor or something like that to like show you the best path for like IT? Like how how was this experience going down this journey different than um, going down the food industry journey? With this one, now I, in the IT world, the information is so easily accessible mm. and there's so many programs out there, free programs like Google giving you uh, 30 free programs where you can earn certificates or there are discounts out there where you can earn certificates like anything in a tech world is out there is on the internet you can just literally google it and you can find your career path on how you want to do it it's so easy accessible nowadays because like i said technology is that of growing it's it's going to grow, grow all of us one day and we're going to have to sit down and learn it for what it is so like the information is out there and that's that's where I was different from my culinary or culinary path into the IT path. And culinary world, I was going to everything blind. I didn't know nothing. I didn't I didn't have anyone to show me the way of how to become a chef or what what hoops I had to go through or what programs I had to or what who how who I had to talk to. I never had that. It was just me on that. Yeah. But now with this I can lit. It's, there's literally things that show you step by step where you can become an IT specialist or security specialist or you know anything out there dealing with tech. Yeah, no, I mean that makes sense to me. Like, um, like I think what's interesting about that though is like in media and stuff like that it seems like it's relatively easy to become a chef you know what i'm saying like you see all these top chef um master chef um chopped all of these different like shows that take all of these different types of home cooks or whoever they are and like they transform them to these kind of like media star chefs and then like you know i as you were saying as far as just like resources and being the accessibility for it do you feel like there's potentially like less scholarships or um, like the funding for um, people of like, uh, I'm, a, I'm not going to say like people of color or like people of like more diverse backgrounds in the sense that they don't have the economic resources to be able to just send their person to like court on blue or something of that nature. Like, is it is that kind of different as well? Well, yes. Like, especially being from Mississippi. Like, being from Mississippi, there's no culinary school in Mississippi. There's no culinary schools in Alabama. And I think that's like a couple in Texas, if I want to say that. And most, and a lot of them is not accredited. You can't just go to any, like, that's just like any other university. You can't just go to anyone and say, hey, teach me how to cook. And people will respect your credentials of what you've gotten. Mm. Like, well, that, that's, in itself is hard. And being a chef, man, like, especially wanting to cook in the Michelin stars on uh, restaurants, Wanting to be a big name chef, like the media chef, you want to be on top, just like that. That's all is incredibly hard. You have to build your your notoriety in order to get that type of exposure. You get mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, 
you basically have to be the number one shelf in your city to get that type of exposure. Yeah. And no. bro, like to be the number one anything in any city is hard within itself. Yeah. That's why nine days you see a lot of um people on Instagram, they're promoting themselves with their cooking or they on TikTok tutorials cooking this man to feel. It's it's more of they trying to get their name out there, get their uh plates out there, get everything out there to get themselves in positions where they can be on chop or they can be on on uh, Hell's Kitchen, or they can get Gordon Ramsay to come to their restaurant and improve it or improve the menu and things like that. Like it's it's a hard, it's a hard, hard field to be in. And then being the shelf, it's a seven day a week job. It's especially weekends. Weekends are your busiest days and who has time? You know, when you got a job and you trying to cook and you trying to promote yourself, all of that is very, very difficult. Yeah. Everything to do. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense, man. So, like, let me ask you this then. So, like, you know, you mentioned, like, the Instagram and, like, TikTok, like, um, influencers or chefs. So, like, what's Mm -hmm. the difference between, like, a cook or and a chef? Like, if I'm just looking on Instagram or something like that, how would I distinguish whether someone's just, like, cooking in their kitchen and, like, this is just what they do on the side and this is someone who's went to school for this and has, like, credentials and they're a real chef? Um, Recipes, man. Recipes. It's it's a lot of... I, I can honestly say this. Instagram and TikTokers mostly use simple recipes, something that your, your moms don't cook before, your grandmas, your uncle, your cousin, something that you can get in your kitchen and you can do it by yourself. Uh-huh. That's the difference. But if you see someone up there filleting, <laughs> filleting steaks, cutting up salmon, like it's, 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 it's a lot more difficulties in the uh, recipes than are just a regular cook. You yeah. can tell just by looking. You can tell about the recipes they're trying, even trying to replicate it yourself. You're like, oh, this is cooking, cooking. This is real cooking. This ain't nothing I can just do on a simple Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's a big distinguisher right there. Like, so for you, is it more so that you love the technique and like the, the methodology of like cooking in itself? Or is it, do you like the, the food aspect of like, I like creating tasty dishes. I'm all on the side of I love to create tasty dishes. Mm-hmm. Like I I really don't care about you know some people are more good about like oh I'm filleting I'm throwing a duck with cranberry and this and that and the fifth. I'm not that. If the food tastes amazing, if the food looks amazing. That's where I'm part of the uh, chef world or the cooking world. I am. It don't matter what are you cooking. Is it does it taste good? Yeah. Does it look amazing? Does it give that appeal? Does it smell amazing? Would will you give will you give this to your mother? Will you give cook this on a date? You know things of that nature. Mm. So like what what's stopping you from um from creating an Instagram account or something of that nature? Um. Well. I'm learning. That's that's another thing I learned taking this path is just because you love it doesn't mean you have to make a job out of it. Mm. You will you will literally give you will literally try to give all your energy, time, and stress yourself out of something that you love, and then you sitting there like, bro, damn, I just gave away my heart and soul to something I love, and I don't want to do it no more. Yeah, like I don't want to get up and go to go in the kitchen and don't even cook anymore yeah so like let me ask you this then so like mm-hmm. i was actually having a very interesting conversation with um one of my friends who's like taking a personal sabbatical is what she calls it and like mm-hmm. what that basically means or how she articulated is is like she's taking a break from her professional life and going to fill in her personal life and invest filling that cup up and so like uh, what that what that kind of looks like for her is she's quitting her job 
and then going to um, go to like um, Cordon Bleu for like a cooking class for like, uh, I think it's a whole summer or three months to get like a certificate or something of that nature. But like, this is something that she's always been passionate about and like has a really good interest for it. And like, you know, she's not going to make a career out of it or anything of that nature, but because she's investing into herself as far as that personal passion, like it's, that's something that she's filling her cup up for that. And so I guess my question for you is like, what does, um, filling your cup with the, the cooking side of it? How do you, how do you do that? Do you host like, um, family friends dinners? Do you like cook special date nights for your girl or stuff like that? What does that look like for you? Uh, <clears throat> Well, for me, the order for me to fill that cup, I go to cooking classes. Like, in your local city, in any city, I'm pretty sure there's someone who hosts in a cooking class mm. where they can show you how to create new dishes. Dishes you never cooked before. Dishes you never even touched before. Like, that's that's my cup. I love new dishes. I love trying new things that I never had before. Yeah. So, like... I go to these classes some some once a month, some twice every two or three months. Like you go to them class and you meet other people who enjoy cooking as well, who they're just to experience cooking, who just want to cook for themselves, who just want to cook, you know, besides just feeding someone, just to enjoy the process of cooking. Yeah, so man. That, that that's all that, that's all I do is. Like when I'm in a mood, I'm in a grind, like, bro, I really want to get in the kitchen and sweat and cook and season and boil, do all that. I just go to a cooking class because the challenge of cooking a new recipe is fun to me. Mm. Yeah. If it's come out good, if it's come out bad, but either way, the process of it is fun. Yeah. How did you, how did you start doing that, man? Like, I think that's a, that's a really impressive thing. Like really and truthfully to, to take, something that you know you love to not make uh to make that honest decision with yourself that it's like hey i love this and i don't want to stop loving it so i'm gonna instead of making a career out of it i'm gonna make it more than just a hobby because if you're taking like two or three a month or even once a month you know what i'm saying that's a lot of classes that's at least 12 a year and mm -hmm. you know that's a pretty big investment that's like people who go to like um, kickboxing classes and stuff like that so they can or go to the gym every um, three times a week or something you're working that muscle like mm -hmm. how did you how did you get to the point that you were starting to do that like um, what made you say I'm gonna make this my priority well before I, before I moved here to New Orleans I was back in Hattiesburg where even though Hattiesburg has plenty of restaurants, it wasn't that much of a diverse in the restaurants. So when I moved here and I started eating different things and trying different food, trying different places, I was like, man, I really want to try to cook these places, cook some of these dishes, cook some of these recipes or try something new. So when I got here and I just, Google it. I was like, cooking classes. There are any cooking classes nearby. Then I went to my first one and absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. And once I did that, it was just a continuous thing like, man, I want to come back. I want to do this again. I want to do this all over again. So it was it was just fun. Like it, it felt it felt the joy in me about cooking that I that been reignited after my two or three failures of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, man, because it's like, like you said, like, um, there's no telling what a career in cooking would have done for you, right? Like, there's, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, there's just no telling at all. But, like, you're still getting that same thrill of learning, like, the different techniques, learning, like, new dishes, like being able to take those home and share that those share that with those you love, like by just simply taking the classes and like get out that 
it's the same thing as saying like just because you go to the gym and you're really fit doesn't mean you're trying to be like a, a professional bodybuilder you just like to do it uh, exactly yeah man exactly. yeah no that makes a lot of sense so like you know i think that that screams a lot of volume about like how you know yourself as a person and like i'm gonna ask this question and it's gonna sound kind of weird but bear with me for a little bit but like how did you get to that point man like how did you like recognize that i'm gonna not necessarily defer this dream but i'm gonna make this a personal passion as as opposed to a professional passion well well, like once once you've been knocked down and you steadily trying to fight your way up for something, it's you you will some well, I'm gonna phrase it. Sometimes you have to step back out of yourself and out of your motivation to see what you're really doing, to see what's how you move and how things are going. So once I took a break from everything, once I sat down, it was like, okay what do I want to do with my life? And really thought about it. I was like, okay, well, the thought process came on my mind. Well, cook, cooking professionally might not be for you. Mm-hmm. And once that thought clicked in my mind, I was like, well, damn, that might be true. And then <laughs> I went into the IT thing and I was like, well, this is going great for me right now. And it's going way easier for me right now than it was when I was cooking. This might be my thing professionally wise mm. you know so yeah. it's all about i think it's all about stepping outside of your life like just really sit down and think about your life and how you want what you want to mold your life to be yeah um, and once you really how okay once you really look at yourself and see the person that you want to be you know how to move differently than you really was yeah Cause I I honestly think a lot of people that move in their career field never just done that, never just took a break from it and were like, damn, this, this is really what I want to do. And this is, am I come out the person I want to come out of at the end of this process? Yeah. So that that's a very, very important thing, man. You will learn a lot by yourself through your failures and through, through everything, really. Yeah. Through the process, yes. I think that that's a very key point. Like, you know, whether you're having a failure or even a win, just being reflective on every single moment in your life, when like a chapter ends or a page ends in your book, being reflective about what just happened before going on into the next one, because it's just like what you just did can help inform you around what to do for your next move. Right. Uh, I, <laughs> I think it's interesting though that you're you're going into like the IT field because it's like very vast, right? And mm-hmm. um so like are you going into like the customer support side, the the program development like what about the technology side outside of like, you know, you liking the tech things and stuff like that cuz it I heard you say um a lot of other things that kind of really stood out to me like for example with being a chef working seven days a week like Mm -hmm. to me that tells me that like you want to make sure you have time for your family because it's just like for whatever reason like being having that quality time is important to you and like being present is important and working seven days a week ain't gonna give you that um so like what is it what is it about it that um you feel like it's more suitable for you um well i'm I'm gonna say this i i haven't got to the other side of the field of the it yet but so far what i looked at is flexible like being an it specialist or being a cyber security specialist or you know planning this and that in the field it's a little more flexible you can you have a little more time with yourself than you do with cooking Cause in the culinary world, you, bro, you, you, you going to cook, you, you going to be at work. You have to literally be in love with it 
to deal with the amount of hours you have to put in, the amount of prep time you have to put in, the the mental space you got to have for it because you only not dealing with the fast pace of the food, you're dealing with customers, you're dealing with other people, other chefs who you know that goes through the same thing you're going through that might get stressed out on a job and that's hard. Like being a cook is very, very, you know, it's a hard job. Like people don't really understand that as a simple fact that besides just food, man, it comes a lot to put in the food and it comes a lot of time and just stress. It's a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of stress. I'm just say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's realistic, man. I think that um, it's, it's important to know what's like, what's important to you. And it's important to know, like, not necessarily, um, your limitations, but more, more of what's negotiable. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody Mm -hmm. has their like capacity when it comes to certain things. Like for me, like I know that when it comes to working with numbers and things of that nature, I have a certain type of capacity for that. And so I don't do a job where I have to work with a lot of numbers. So I'm not like an accountant or anything of that nature. But like, I think for you, like you said, you've had so much reflection around like what's important to you and like what you want to get out of things that it's not necessarily um, deterred you from cooking wholeheartedly. It's just, you've pivoted to more of making it like you said a personal passion to where it's like you you treat it just like going to the gym like it's something that you love you do on the regular but you're not a professional at it in the sense of like oh i'm gonna be on chopped or like i work at um um at a michelin Uh, restaurant or something (laughs) yeah like you 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 trying to be on an emerald gracie's restaurant and trying to fillet burn up steaks all day you know no i'm i'm not i've i've cooked you know i've worked in restaurants before and i've dealt with that stress for years and i it has that comes with like no man i don't want to be stressing my life out for the next 25 to 30 years just because i love this passion and hobby man you have to put yourself and your mental space first, or you will go crazy yeah. trying to do something you love. Yeah. So, like, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about not necessarily the mental space, but what you want for the next like five to ten years. Because it's just like you and I are both at very interesting points in our lives. Like mm-hmm. being in our late twenties, going into our thirties, and stuff like that. A whole new decade. Like, I think that the interesting part about this particular phase in our life is when we were in high school and stuff, and we were going into college, going into our twenties, we had expectations of what we wanted our twenties to look like, but I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't, I just was more so about going with the flow. I was intentional about things, but it was just like, I kind of did it because that's what everyone else was doing. It's like, yeah, I go to college. Like that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I'll Mm -hmm. go get a job. That's what you're supposed to do. But, like, I learned so much in my 20s that, like, for my 30s, I really want to be intentional about everything that I do because I know what fills my cup and I know what pours my cup out. And so, like, for you, what are you kind of looking forward to as far as just, like, this next chapter into your life and, like, what is that kind of world that you want to build for yourself? Um, peace and comfortability and comfortable being comfortable within myself, my career and, you know, and just in life in general, because it's like, like you said, right. In my twenties, I thought I had it all figured out. I thought I was on my way to being, you know, that five-star chef in a five-star restaurant, having my own everything. But in my 20, you learn so much in your 20s, man. Like that life, life shows, life tells you that, bro. It's not as you plan. It's not gonna go as you go. You're not gonna do none of the things you thought you was gonna do. So like in this next life of my 30s, I honestly feel like 
my 30s are gonna be my prime years. Like, I'm gonna have what I want out of life together in my 30s. Even if it's gonna take two years within my 30s, I think I would get to that point where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the 20s, 20s is everything you gonna learn about the world. And I feel like your 30s is how you going to come back with the world you trying to push against you. Yeah. Oh, man, this is it's a beautiful thing, man. Well, you know, I really appreciate you taking out the time to sit down and talk with me today, man. I, um, I have a few lightning questions that I do on every episode and uh, want to just go through with these with you. And then I'll let you get back to the rest of your day. How's that sound? Oh, man. Perfect. Let's go. All right. What's your favorite relaxation or self-care activity? My favorite one is listening to music. And this this is sound odd coming from a 29-year-old, but just have my headphones in and cleaning my house. That is the most relaxing, calming thing I ever do. Like, if I'm stressed out, I would just get up and find anything to clean with my headphones on. If I got to straighten out the closet that day, I will. <laughs> if I don't, I don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, what's your best book recommendation? Oh, bro, actually, I have it, and I don't want to. I don't want to lie to the people out there. <laughs> I have a whole bookcase here. I'm trying not to lie to you guys. Give me two seconds. Uh, what's the name of it? What's the name of it? Yeah, the Black Ambitionist. And for for an African American male and female, I I would recommend that book to you guys. Okay. I don't read that thing like at least two times. All right, the Black Abolitionist. Yes. All right, sounds good. And one person you want to thank for your journey thus far? Oh man, my mom's. Man, every time I've been kicked, scrubbed, pushed, man, she's been there to pick me up, motivate me, show show me the love and care that I needed in each one of my downfalls and my moments. I would give all that credit to her. Oh, man, that's beautiful. I love it. Well, man, um, thank you for being on the show, and I really appreciate you. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Oh, man, thank you. You guys, don't be coy. <laughs> this has been another episode of Don't Be Coy with Uncle Lou. As always, I'd like to thank this episode's guest for a great conversation, as well as thank you, the listener, for joining in. Whether you're a first-time listener or a regular, I always appreciate your support. If you like today's episode and ever want to listen to more, subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Audible, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. And to join our community and access future bonus content, be sure to visit dbkpodcast.com.